At this point in the class, you probably recognize that scientists really like to measure things, and drawing all these pictures, uh, while, while it's kind of fun, isn't going to be enough for us to make graphs and charts and things like that. So we need some basis for measurement. And with the water table, we usually talk about how high is the water table above sea level. And we just write down its elevation. So at this point right here, the water table is 35 meters above sea level. Looks like over here we're at about 30 meters above sea level. And if we had a well that was over here, it would show us that the groundwater table is at 25 meters above sea level. So we're still in this picture looking at a slice through the earth. But let's go ahead and let's sort of fly around here. And we'll look at things from up above. Here are those monitoring wells that we had that told us the elevation of the water table at three different points. Here's our tree viewed from above. And here are a couple other wells that maybe we have nearby. So what we do is we draw a line connecting all the places where the groundwater table is about the same at 35 meters, draw another line connecting those at 30 meters, another line there at 25, and let's go ahead and just change the labeling around a little bit. We'll call these lines here are going to be contour lines, and now which way will groundwater flow? Well, groundwater flow always flows down slope, and these are the sl these are the lines telling you the height of the water table. So the slope of the water table goes from right over to the left, and we call this type of view from above a contour map. And in general, water will always flow from high elevations of the water table to low elevations. And so, uh, if you're looking at this contour map it in sort of three dimensions looks kind of like this. The red stuff is the high areas, the blue things are lower areas. And so you can start taking a picture, or uh, looking at this picture and trying to figure out which way would groundwater flow. And when you do that, you start seeing it goes from these high levels like 6,700 feet down to 6,300 feet. And in particular, water doesn't just flow downslope or downhill, it actually flows on the steepest route downhill. And the steepest route is always going to be at 90 degree angles to contour lines. And so you can kind of see that this water is curving around here as it, as it goes perpendicular to all the contour lines. And if I had drawn this perfectly, every single blue line would cross a black line at exactly a 90 degree angle. So let's take a look at another example of this. Here are some contour lines kind of similar to the ones we had before. And let's say that we have a drop of water that lands at uh, point A, percolates down, and now it's hitting the water table. Which way is it going to flow? Well, it's going to flow from uphill in the ground water table to downslope. But it's now we also know that it also has to go perpendicular to each one of these black lines. So from A, is it going to go down to E or to D? Well, we can put there and we can make sure that each one of these arrows is at a 90 degree angle to the, to the black contour line and that shows us that this one ends up here at D.